In 2004, Paul Martin brought in a $41 billion health accord, which promised 6% annual increases to federal health care transfers to the provinces for the next 10 years. He called it a fix for a generation, claiming our health care system was underfunded and throwing money at the problem would fix it. Did it work? Did it facilitate the kind of innovation Canada's health care system needed? The Health Council of Canada released a report in 2013, looking back over a decade at health care reform in Canada and found disappointing results for taxpayers and patients alike. The report found that progress on wait times for key procedures stalled, primary health care services lag behind other countries, home care services do not adequately meet seniors' needs, prescription drug costs remain beyond the means of many Canadians, including one in ten unfilled prescriptions and to skip doses. Canadian slight increase in life expectancy has been overpowered by a wave of conditions like diabetes and the number of Canadians with two or more chronic conditions rose to 31 percent by 2010. So if money was the solution, what did we have to show for it? 41 billion dollars later, where part of the issue had to do with the fact that the feds were throwing money at the provinces, money that wasn't earmarked for anything, an unfortunate and inconvenient truth for some on the left is that most of the funds would go toward paying wages and benefits for union employees, not to the kind of innovation that was actually needed in healthcare. But in addition to untied funds, there was another problem. Namely, the spending trajectory was out of control. Here's what spending would have looked like at an indefinite 6% increase, that's the blue line. And the red line is what the Conservatives are actually doing. When the accord expired, the Conservatives said they would continue to increase annual health care transfers by 6% for the next two years. And after that, transfers would be tied to economic growth with a minimum annual increase of 3%. The reason being that an indefinite increase of 6% annually is unsustainable. Were the Conservatives to continue on that path of a 6% annual increase, come 2030, the cost would be an extra $24 billion. And that's just for that year alone. Where would the money come from? Now, groups like the far left Engage Canada call this a cut. It's no surprise that this group is run by former Dalton McGuinty architects. We saw how McGuinty Economics works. He promised the world and the result was endless deficits. But it's not a cut. This is money that was never promised. They aren't saving by not spending what was never promised. Moreover, transfer payments are still going up. If Canada's economy grew at 7% per year, these increases wouldn't matter because that would mean federal revenue is growing at proportionately a greater rate, but it isn't. We could strip the CBC of its $1 billion, but it would still leave billions unaccounted for. Healthcare in Canada isn't free, and endless 6% increases to healthcare spending isn't sustainable. The Conservatives have taken a step in the right direction, but more needs to be done to ensure the long term viability of our healthcare system. For the Rebel.media, I'm Marissa Semkew.